What's up guys, Pete here from the Sunday Drive and today we're gonna show you how to install some valve springs on your LS or LT based engine, so stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel. As you can see behind me, there is a Silverado and in front of me are the heads from the 5.3 engine inside of it. And we're nearing the completion of an AFM delete uh, this will also be applicable to the DFM deletes, but we're going to show you how to replace the valve springs on these engines. Uh, as you may know, we have a series showing how to delete the AFM on Cliff's 2014 Silverado, but we didn't get into this part because Cliff got new heads and they came pre-assembled with the springs already there. So we figured why not use this opportunity to show you how to do that on the LT-based engine. This will be the same process for an LS-based engine, but the tool will be different. So this is the tool that we're going to be using for the L83, L86, LT1, LT4, LT5, LT2, LT6. You got the idea. Uh, LS-based engines, there's another tool, but realistically, it's a very straightforward process. So let's get into it. So this should give you an idea of what to expect when you order a set of valve springs. In this case, we're installing the Brian Tooley Racing or BTR valve spring kit. These are the 660 lift. That's 660 thousandths of an inch uh, valve springs. And as always, everything that we have in our videos, the parts, the tools, they will be linked in the description below. And if you purchase through those links, it does help us out so we can keep making these videos. So that would be greatly appreciated. This is the main thing we're looking at here. This is the valve spring. This is a dual valve spring. So there's two of them in here. Actually, you can pop it out, small and big. And uh, on top of that goes your retainer. And you always want to make sure that the steps on the retainer are fitting into both the inner and outer spring. Because sometimes they do come not fitting, and that is a machining issue. So you don't want to install those. You also have your collars to install um, on top of the retainer to keep the valve spring in place. You have some new seals and a locator to go on the bottom of the valve spring, like so. And finally, this kit comes with shims. GPI includes this kit and these shims are meant to go that way, but we're gonna show you how to measure for valve springs when you're installing them on your head. So there's two different ways you can do that. You can use something like this. This is a valve spring micrometer. And as you can see, there's some numbers on the side. You would install this in there in place of the spring and you would expand it until it stops. And when you get to a number, for instance, this would be seven, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So when you see the seven zero on the valve spring micrometer, what that correlates to is 1.7 inches or 700 thousandths. So if you were to tighten it till it gets to that number, that's your installed valve spring height. Now this tool doesn't work with this engine, unfortunately, so we can't use it, but there's another method. So how this works is you loosen this threaded uh, screw on the back or on the end and these spring-loaded tips on the T will expand to wherever you put them, right? So you, you put them in, you squeeze them in, you tighten the end of this and it holds them in and then when you're ready to measure you loosen it and it pops out. So let's go ahead and measure this height here. Make sure I'm on the proper uh, step on the retainer and tighten this. And now we'll measure this with the calipers. And we have 1.821 inches. So 1.821 would be our current installed valve spring height. If we know that we want the valve spring height to be less, we would install some shims. Um, and we figure out that number based off of the coil bind and the clearance is like usually a 50,000 of an inch clearance. And then you add in the lift of the cam so the cam has a big part to play in this because you don't want a cam that has too much lift and causes the coil to bind because that's no bueno. Uh, you'll start breaking things. So, so this isn't an in-depth video about how to find all of the pressures at different heights of a valve spring necessarily, but a good rule of thumb is if you're trying to figure out the installed height of the spring, your desired height, and like we just showed you how to measure the actual height of the spring, based off of the uh, locator and the retainer. 
what you're going to do is take this spring and compress it. Uh, you're going to compress it to the point where it can't compress anymore, and that's where your coil bind is, and coil bind is where the coils are binding against each other. You can't compress a spring any more than that, and if a cam is too hot, has too much lift, uh, and you hit the coil bind, then you continue to try to push it further, you're going to cause damage to your valve train. So what you do is you compress this spring, whether you use a vise or the proper tools like a spring press, and you find coil bind, and then you measure that. So you measure the, the height of the spring when it's bound. Then you add some sort of a safety factor. That's normally 50 thousandths of an inch or 60 thousandths of an inch. And now you have your clearance. So you know that if you compress to that height, you're not going to reach coil bind and uh, you haven't damaged anything. On top of that, so you now have your coil bind height, your safety factor, your 50 thousandths of an inch. Now you take the height of the cam or the lift of the cam, which could be 500 thousandths, 600 thousandths of an inch. So you add that on top of that uh, safety factor number. Um, that's going to give you typically your desired uh, spring installed height. So if you end up with an installed height of 1.8 like we had earlier um, and you know that you want your installed height of the spring based off of the calculations that I just talked about to be 1.795 uh, then you're going to need to add a shim to get to that installed height. So that's the general theory of it, and there's a lot of really good videos out there showing how to do that. So for the LT-based engine, we're gonna be using this Bluegrass Performance valve spring installer. This will not work on an LS engine. There's not really many tools you need otherwise, except for a socket wrench and an extension and another box wrench. Now, because we're able to install these off of the vehicle, we don't have to worry so much about the valves falling into the cylinder and then never being able to get to them again, but you still wanna stick something under the head so that the valves don't fall while you're doing the job, even on the table. So you stick this rag under here and that's going to apply a force to the valves so that they can't fall down. But even if they did, you can just push them back up. If you're doing this on your vehicle, you're going to need some sort of way to pressurize the cylinder or some people stick a rope into the spark plug hole, uh, just a way to prevent the valves from falling into the hole and into the abyss, because then you're taking the heads off anyway. So the first thing you're going to do is install your valve spring tool, and it bolts up to the rocker arm perches right here. And you don't wanna ever use power tools for this, or if you do, at the absolute minimum torque setting, because you can damage the mating surface and crack it open. So, so just snug these down. Next up, we have to center this part of the tool on the springs and bring the nut down. This is where you will use your open-ended or box wrench and start to compress the springs. And it's important to make sure that this threaded rod is lubricated. You don't want to run it dry. So right now what's happening is I started compressing the springs, but the retaining collars aren't releasing. So I'm going to take that socket that I used earlier, put it right on top, and just give it a little tap. And as you can see, I did it to one of them and both actually released. So now I'll get a magnet and go ahead and extract these. We're not gonna reuse these, the kit comes with new ones. Now we can go ahead and loosen this tool and pull off the springs. And as you're working in this area, be careful not to damage this mating surface here, because if you do, then you could have a leaky valve cover and no one wants more oil leaks. Okay, so that's free. What I found is that you can actually just kind of pick this up and rotate it 90 degrees and continue the job. So here's your OE valve spring. It's just a single uh, tapered valve spring. And what you're left with is the valve stem seal. So go ahead and get some pliers and pull that up. So here's the OEM valve stem seal, and these are not renewable. Fun fact on BMWs, these often get very hard and brittle and cause a lot of oil to leak past them, and you get a lot of smoke out the exhaust. All right, remove the other valve spring and the seal. 
And we want to clean up some of this grit and grime that's in here. It seems like the exhaust valve gets a lot more junk on it, which is kind of interesting. So we're going to clean that up. So I'm using a little brake clean to clean off the oil and junk. But one thing to be aware of is you don't want to get brake clean or use brake clean on these new titanium retainers because they can corrode them. So as I said earlier, we have a shim, we have a locator, and we have a retainer. We already know that we're gonna be using this 15 thousandths inch shim, but if you don't know what shim to use, then you're going to need to measure the installed valve spring height. So you're gonna start out with these two. You'll install the locator, and then what you'll do is install the retainer and you'll use these little collars. And they are tapered, so you don't want to install them upside down. There's only one way to properly install these. So they're tapered so that when you pull up on the retainer, they hold it in place. So we can go ahead and remove this retainer, and it always helps to use the magnet. So now that we know what our shim size is, we install that first. After installing the shim, you can drop on your locator and then you can install your valve stem seal. And I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, assembly lube on this so it's not dry. doesn't need much, but slide that on. And there's a few ways to install these. Some people would say the right way or the wrong way, but as long as you don't damage it, they all work. So I'm going to take a socket and use that to push down on the seal. I'll add an extension. I'm going to push down on this. There's all their tools where you can create like a lever arm, for instance, right? So you can install like an eye hook or an eyelet into this threaded hole here where the tool currently is. And you can leverage it and push the seal down. These are pretty easy to install, so you can actually just kind of push down on it. Now we'll install the other shim the other locator, and the other valve stem seal. Now you can install your springs. On these, there is no top and bottom. Uh, if you get a tapered spring, then there will be a top. Make sure it's sitting on the locator. Bring the tool up so it's out of the way. I'm gonna need to raise up the threads on this so I can fit the new retainers in. Make sure the stepped side of the retainer is facing down. And now we're going to try and center this. And, and this is where this tool kind of isn't the greatest. Uh, it can be hard to align both of these at the same time. So sometimes it's nice to just be able to do one spring at a time because you're trying to do two at once and one might line up pretty well, but the other one's gonna be under tension. You're gonna have a hard time uh, doing that one. So you might have to raise the tool, move it around, lower the tool again. So as you can see, one of these is not aligned and the other one is pretty much centered. So you kind of have to try and play with both while you're tightening the tool down. So go ahead and install the shims for the retainer. And as you can see, there's a little notch here or a raised section. And that lines up with the uh, notch on the valve stem. Fun fact about that is that's actually not what holds the valve spring in place. That's just a locator. It's actually the taper on these shims that keeps it from uh, sliding off. So go ahead and install that. After you've installed both sides, and I only have one side installed right now, but I just wanna show you what happens. You can start to release the tension and it's gonna just lock the spring in. And as you can see by all the other springs, this is where we left off. So these are the last two springs and that's how you do it. All right, so that is how you install valve springs on the LT heads. And like I said, this will be the same process for the LS heads. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish up this last valve spring, throw these heads on the engine. The engine, uh, the new cam is installed, the new lifters are installed. Uh, these are ready to go on and then we're good to tune it. So, 
If you haven't seen our other videos in the series and you're interested, please be sure to check those out. We go into every single step about removing the engine, installing the new cam, deleting the DOD lifters, reinstalling everything and the challenges along the way. So be sure to check that out. And uh, if you found this video to be helpful, please give us a big like and subscribe and thanks for watching.